now we've set up all of our uh, actions. Now we need to actually uh, update our positions um, with each update cycle. So we can actually get some movement updates occurring. Uh, here I'm going to set a note that says um, character movement updates. And uh, so we're going to set up a timer. We, want, we don't want our guy to just blaze across the screen at warp speed. Uh, we want him to be moving at a, you know, a predetermined rate. But we also want to take, you know, we want to factor in our character's movement speed that we set up in our tune class. Um, so we want these updates to happen fairly quickly, but still be kind of controlled. We're going to say move time plus equals globals dot game time dot elapsed game time total milliseconds. So we're going to increment our move time. That's going to be our timer. And then we're going to say if our move time is greater than 25 milliseconds and tune moving equals true so our guy is in the move in, in a moving state then let's move him we'll say if move direction equals 0 and Tune offset x is not equal to zero, meaning he's not between movement cycles, or tune offset y is not between movement cycles, then um, we'll say move in the last direction, okay? And what we're doing here is forcing our character to complete his movement cycle before accepting any new inputs. So we can say here, um, complete move cycle before accepting new inputs. Otherwise, else, go ahead and move him in a new direction. All right. Does that make sense? And then we're going to say if tune offset x equals 0 and tune offset y equals zero, then we are obvious, whoops, not if I actually put a value there, then uh, that would mean that we are between movement cycles, right? So we'll just say tune moving is obviously false. We're just kind of keeping track of that with each update cycle. And I need one more end if here to finish that. Then I'm going to reset my move time. Oops. Okay. So we've forced our character to move. Um, we've checked to see if the character is between movement cycles. Uh, if he is, then we complete our movement. Otherwise, we accept a new movement direction. Um, and then we uh, make sure that if we are between movements, that our movement is set to false. So this does not keep firing uh, if it's false. Otherwise, he'd just keep moving on his own off the screen. Um, and then finally, as with all timing loops, uh, we reset our time to accept another, you know, to begin this cycle over and over again. Um, that's not all we need to do, however. 
uh, we have not actually updated our character's coordinates at this at this time. So let's say let's make him aware of uh, where he is in the world by saying update tune coordinates. What this will do is make it so he um, is no longer just a static, uninvolved object in the you know stuck in the middle of the screen. He is actually now aware of what's around him, what tiles uh, are in front of him, uh, like we were using for our um, you know to to check this. We have to know what our tune x and tune y is to see what the next tile is and if it's blocked or not. So he has to be aware of his surroundings at this point. So we're going to say tune x equals map x plus tune screen x. Okay. And the reason we're using his physical position is because map x, if you remember, is always the top leftmost corner of your map. Um, not sure if I can run this right now without crashing it. Maybe. Okay. Um, this is map X, map Y. Okay. This is where it be, you know, your screen begins drawing the map from that tile out. And he is, uh, at this point, he is eight, eight tiles in and uh, six tiles down. So that offset has to be appended to actually, you know, figure out what his position in that world is because he's obviously not going to be uh, up in the top left corner of the screen uh, checking tiles around him there. He's going to be in the center of the screen. So I'm going to say tune y equals map y plus tune screen y. And that's all there is to it. And we can say end character movement updates. It's not really an end, it just uh, begins a new cycle at that point. All right. All right. So, you know, if you want, you can go ahead and start your debugger. And uh, what you'll notice is that our character is still facing left and uh, he's unable to move in any direction. And the reason for that is because back when we configured our map base, when we created our temporary map, we set, you know, we did this loop to populate all of the tiles and we set is blocked to true. So right now every tile on the map is blocked. So let's just go ahead and set every tile on the map is blocked equals false and run that again and what you'll see is that we can now move our character up down left right he's always facing um, he's always facing left still and that's because we haven't set his uh, fetch tune source to dynamically grab the last direction uh, that we moved and uh, the reason that he moves an entire tile instead of you know smoothly scrolling to the next tile um, is because we haven't factored those you know we haven't factored the offsets into his uh, not into his movement but into the maps drawing cycle. So to show you what I mean, first let's go ahead and uh, open up our world screen. If you um, have it open already, or you can select it from your Solution Explorer. And uh, we want to go down here. First thing we'll do is correct his uh, the direction he's facing. So let's go ahead and just set this to um, last direction for his tune source. All right, and that'll fire the function in our tune class uh, to grab the proper. Um, rectangle from his image source. I'm going to run that one more time. Look at that. 
Now we don't have any tile blocking so we can walk in the water and anywhere we want. But he faces the proper direction. So now let's see if we can make this uh, map move in a nice smooth manner. I'm going to go back to my world screen. And what I want to do is go to where I'm drawing my tiles this time because it's not the character moving smoothly. Uh, it's the map itself that we want to uh, scroll smoothly. So, um, to my destination rectangle, okay, I'm doing draw x times tile size. And what I want to do is just add in my character's offset value. Okay, remember he moves in an offset direction either um, to negative 32 or to positive 32. So what I'm going to do is say plus tune offset x. Okay, so that'll move him in a positive or negative direction. And we want to do the same for the draw y. So we're going to say plus tune offset y. Okay. Now if we did that properly, it should be a nice smooth movement cycle. Exactly what we would like to see in our game. Look at that. Now if, I, if you see any uh, screen lag, uh, it's probably just because of my recording software. This is actually moving uh, very nicely on my screen. So really, um, we have accomplished what we've set out to do. Now if you're wondering if the the uh, collision, the terrain collision, is working properly. Let's see if we can set this mountain uh, to be blocked. I'm going to just, uh, for fun, go into our map base here. And here we have, um, we've set a mountain tile. I'm just going to say, grab that. And instead of the terrain type, I want to say, um, is blocked. Where is that? There it is. Is blocked equals true. So let's test uh, terrain collision here. All right, I'm going to walk away from the mountain. Look at that. I can't walk through my mountain anymore. So we have already created um, movement and terrain collision. And it's working beautifully. Now I did not set collision on the rest of these tiles. So what we may want to do later on is set up a loop uh, to evaluate the tiles that are on the map and set them properly. Again, this is not the best way to do it. We'd normally uh, set these values manually uh, through a map editor and then we could have, you know, like secret passageways as well. We could, you know, each individual tile can have its own value. Uh, that's the beauty of this system. So, I guess the next thing uh, to tackle is making it so we our character has a walk cycle. Right now, he's just sort of levitating and uh, you know floating through the map without moving his feet. Uh, we want to give him a nice little walk cycle there. So that'll be the next segment, um, and then we'll move on to part seven. Uh, I will. Catch you on the next bit.